Hello, spicy people of the internet. My name is Stand Up Put, aka a tall glass of almond milk, and welcome to the Spice 8 Rack. In this episode, I'm going to be asking the question who's going to die in the inevitable confrontation between the multiverse's planeswalkers and Big Daddy Neck himself, Nicole Bolas? I am aware this is neither the Mill vs. Discard philosophy or the comedic flavor text writing 101 video I said I was planning, but the War of the Spark trailer dropped like two hours after my Goblin essay, and there's no way I wasn't jumping on this hype train. Now this isn't going to be a prediction video for the set itself in terms of mechanics or what's going to happen after War of the Spark, but I do have a couple of ideas in that regard. Uh, for example, I think Planeswalkers are going to get super depowered a la Mending Part 2 and they're going to start appearing at rare in this set and in all future sets because let's be honest, you can't exactly be a mythic rare character in a set teeming with mythic rare characters. The amount of Planeswalkers on their way to fight Bolas is in the the dozens and that's just the planeswalkers that we have cards for and that we know about. I also haven't read the upcoming novel set during the events of Guilds of Ravnica block or the £30 art book that isn't available anywhere as an online resource so this is all going to be a 100% prediction and what I believe would make the most narrative and dramatic sense to happen to each character. There's a whole other video and a whole other discussion to have about wizards hiding their story behind an additional paywall within a game that we've already thrown a whole bunch of money at in order to play but that's like that's its whole other video and I'm not gonna get into that right now my mouth is numb from ulcer medication and I am on my sixth cup of coffee for this morning so let's get into who gone die Amen. Now I'm predicting these deaths hoping that Wizards isn't going to have Bolas pull a Thanos and remotely kill a bunch of planeswalkers from across different planes whilst he's on Ravnica. I think everyone's kind of already seen that coming and it's been done before, not only just by Marvel but by Wizards themselves uh, within the events of Fifth Dawn when Memnarch remotely killed most of the creatures on Mirrodin. As such, characters like Aminato, Estrid, Jiang, Mu and the Kenriths are likely to survive the battle simply by virtue of not having enough characters to development or motivation to become tangled up on Ravnica. That being said, Ajani is scouring the multiverse looking for planeswalkers to bring to Ravnica to face off against Bolas, so it's all pretty much fair game for a lot of the less developed walkers as to who is going to show up. For example, whilst they have no reason per se to be there, I could see the Kenriths joining Ajani with the promise of an epic show-stopping battle in store. It's pretty difficult, if not impossible, to legitimately predict who amongst these walkers would die, I think it's very much up in the air for all of these very unknown planeswalkers, so I'm gonna put them all in this little category of they could die, uh, they could live, oh who knows, it's a potluck, death potluck. Now, Angraf, he's, oh god, I've just, I've just realised how many of these names I've yet to pronounce in real life, I've just seen them written down. Oh, this is going to be... Oh, I'm really not looking forward to ha pronouncing whatever the lady from Ixalan is actually called. Oh, no. Angrath has only just gotten back to his home plane of... Uh, we don't actually know what Angrath's home plane is. Uh, we know it has dragons and we know it has minotaurs. And the minotaurs aren't just rampaging barbarians. So it's not Theros. It's not Amon Ket because he looks nothing like Neheb. It's probably not Zendikar. Otherwise, he would have mentioned the Eldrazi. Mo if you come from Zendikar and you're a planeswalker, you mention the Eldrazi. It's like how people from Chelsea have to say, Oh, you know, I'm from Chelsea, but it's not like made in Chelsea, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm going to pencil him in as a Dominarian for now, and hopefully that's not going to come and bite me later. He's only just been reunited with his two daughters, and I highly doubt he'd leave them again to travel to Ravnica, which is about to host the same immortal son that imprisoned him on Ixalan in the first place. Angrath is safe to survive. Ashiok. Despite all of their bolas coding, the Nightmare Weaver has yet to make an appearance in any storyline associated with Bolas, nor have they been hinted to by any of Bolas's allies. They are a very independent villain, and I can't see them being coerced into joining the ranks of either the Gatewatch or Bolas. We'll probably only see Ashok again if we ever go back to Lorwyn, as they'd be a perfect antagonist for the plane. Also, uh, wizards, for God's sake, 
Go back to law when you lunatics, you would be printing money. Ashiok is safe to survive. Dak Faden. I predict we will see the greatest thief in the multiverse, except for Teferi, who stole all of our hearts. In the background of a card or two, saving a civilian or running away from danger, he probably won't have a pivotal role in the story, and certainly not one large enough to warrant him a reason to die, but he'll probably be on the plane fighting with, or at least nearby, the Gatewatch. There's also a chance he just won't be on Ravnica at all. His Mythic Edition art very clearly shows that he's still bumming around on Fiora, and there's a good chance that his self-preserving attitude will lead him to not turn up to the battle or heed the lightning bug project. Dag Faden is very much going to live. Doretti's mythic art also shows the goblin on a different plane, Kaladesh. Whilst this doesn't confirm that the goblin won't make an appearance in War of the Spark somewhere, I have to doubt it. Much like a lot of characters I've already mentioned, he's either too new to the story, too self-centered, or too uninvolved with any Bolas-themed schemes to show up on Ravnica. His priorities and allegiances very much lie with himself and with Grenzo on Fiora. Also, Doretti can't die, because if Doretti dies, I will riot. Vraska. I have to think that the Gorgon Queen of the Golgari will, to utilize an expression popular with the Utes, <clears throat> bite the big one, yas, Queen Slay. I think I read that right. She's completed her Wii character arc, going from power-hungry assassin to empathetic sleeper agent, and we've seen her portrayed on a decent number of cards for R&D to have explored her design space to a satisfying degree. I think that her death would have a pretty legitimate emotional fallout to it. She'll betray Bolas, kill one of the hench people to save Jace, and then get murdered shortly after. Jace will be sad, sadness will go on the stack, sadness will resolve. I'm pretty sure that with their emotional connection to Jace, either Vraska or Liliana is going to bite it and I'm gonna be honest I don't think Liliana's gonna die I'll talk about that in a very short amount of time Liliana wow that was a really short amount of time her character arc dictates that she should absolutely die she's gone from a selfish necromancer to a member of a team and has now been placed in an impossible position where she has to choose between survival and what's right she should sacrifice herself to save the gatewatch at a crucial moment she should However, the Raven Man is so tied to her character that it would be impossible to resolve that storyline without Liliana being alive in some capacity, and Wizards has already put so many pages of lore into building up this new antagonist that I can't see Liliana getting killed off now before any significant details about the Raven Man have been revealed. Not gonna lie, Wizards have kind of really dead-ended themselves with Liliana. If she survives, it's boring. If she dies, it's frustrating. But I think Liliana is going to live. Arlen Cord and Samut will get lumped together. Canonically, they're very young walkers, and so will probably make up the ranks of whatever superhero fighting force will come after the War of the Spark, as opposed to being killed off. Samut is still on Amonkhet, protecting the survivors of Nactimum from the horrors Bolas unleashed upon them, and Arlen was last seen fighting the old Drazi alongside Thalia. Will Samut's previous beef with Bolas lead her to seek revenge on Ravnica? Will Kord's desire to help others bring the werewolf to the aid of the Gatewatch? If it does, I guarantee they will both only suffer character developing injuries. I don't believe that Ho Hoi Oh no, it's the lady from Ixalan! Hoyateli! Hoyateli! Huat, Huatli, Huatli, oh god I remember someone from the OGS pronouncing this now, it's Huatli, oh god thank god I watched the coverage that Wizards is trying to suppress. I don't believe that Huatli will die either, yes we've seen a lot from her but she's been groomed to take over from Ajani as the walker in the multiverse that's Naya aligned. Huatli was last seen on the streets of Kaladesh spewing some frankly awful poetry. Alright, I may be a bloody tourist when it comes to Ludo now, but you know what? I know my stuff about poetry, I do. I, I, I read Inua Elms, I've got Rob Orton, Vanessa Casule. I, 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 I have a master's degree in transnational writing, specialising in spoken word, and I turned my 36th K word essay into a fashionable hat because I've got no idea what I'm supposed to be doing with my bloody life. Wizards, please give me a job writing Huatli's poetry. I'm really good at it. And she'll probably attend the battle alongside Sahili. Her survival is a little bit less certain than that of Arlen Cord and Samut just because we've seen her a couple of times now, but I do believe that Huatli is going to survive the battle. Koth. 
There is no way she's leaving New Phyrexia. What went on in that plane that caused the disaster is, strangely enough, one of the few bad events in the multiverse that Bolas hasn't had a hand in. That being said, if Koff turned up on Ravnica to recruit walkers to his cause only to get ganked by Bolas' super zombies, I would absolutely die of laughter. Ral already betrayed Bolas by reshaping Project Lightning Bug into a device to call planeswalkers to Ravnica. Ravnica? Ah uh, yes, come to Ravniklo, we have many goats. He even aided Niv-Mizzet directly in his gambit to steal the power of the Guild Pact. And we know Bolas is going to find out about that because Dovin already discovered Raoul's plans and sabotaged them just as the dragon appeared on the plane. Bolas isn't exactly the most forgiving dragon in all of the multiverse. Once travelling to Kamigawa to murder the Mionin of Night's Reach because someone the Kami had sent to Dominaria over a thousand years prior had started a lineage of humans, one of which had ended up killing Bolas. Someone who can hold on to grudges over the course of millennia and even death isn't the kind of guy you want to double cross. Ral will be made an example of, attempting to planeswalk away from Bolas, only to be stopped by the immortal son and super, super murdered. I cannot stress just how murdered Ral is going to be. Narset. Whilst she's currently busy on Tarkir uncovering the history of the old Khans, I could see her being brought to the battle alongside Ugin to fight Bolas, who, after all, had a pivotal role in the massive altering of Tarkir's history. Much like Huatli and Samut, she's quite a young walker, and her death wouldn't have much narrative impact, and as such, I doubt she will be killed off. As always, planeswalkers have a habit of being murdered, but only the ones that have significant emotional weight given to their characters already. Sorin, still trapped in Innistrad's geometry. He'll be a legendary land in return to Innistrad. Vivian Reed! This planeswalker is to Bolas what Drax the Destroyer was to Thanos. No, this isn't going to be the last time I make an Infinity War comparison. Dovin Barn is Ebony Moore. Prove me wrong. When I was first writing this list, Vivian Reed was actually one of the first planeswalkers I put down as definitely going to survive the battle. However, the more I thought about it, the more likely it is that she's actually going to die. Yes, she is canonically an incredibly young planeswalker, only being introduced in M19. However, her entire backstory, and in fact her entire character, is defined by Bolas. What this means is that after Bolas dies, she doesn't have any loose ends, she doesn't have any particular drive to do anything else. Her entire character is defined by this one villain. As such, she could very easily die in this battle and it not seem like a complete waste. It would also be a massive surprise to most people expecting her to survive and expecting her to join the ranks of the new Gatewatch or whatever it's going to be called after Thanos. Damn it, it's, I called him Thanos. It's not Thanos, it's bloody Bolas. But I predict that Vivian Reed is going to die in the battle and her super weapon will not actually be used on Bolas at all. Or if it is, it's going to not be effective. Ajani, one of the Lorwyn Five. Ugh. Remember when wizard stories didn't solely revolve around planeswalkers? What a time that must have been. I would I would have been 11. I, I have no nostalgia for this moment. Ajani has faced and bested Bolas in the past, but I can very easily see this Leonin walker getting killed whilst protecting one of the younger walkers that he brings to Ravnica. He does have one loose end to tie up, however, and that's being avenging the death of Elspeth at the hands of the sun god Heliod, although there's very little narrative weight given to that thread. My prediction would be that Ajani bites it, saving someone's life, which inspires Gideon to do the same. Speaking of... Gideon is going to die. There is no way he doesn't. I will eat my copy of Gideon of the Trials if Gideon survives. Do you remember when you watched Infinity War and, spoiler alert, you left the theater realizing that not one of the original Avengers died and you felt super cheated? At least one of the central Gatewatch characters is going to die and Gideon is the most likely easily. On Amonkhet, Hazaret already prophesied that Gideon would die, and Bolas wrecked him when they last fought, taunting him about his meaningless acts of heroism. <laughs> ah, Gideon. How easy it must be to play the protector when you think yourself untouchable. How wrong you are. <laughs> ah, nya. The, the nya isn't in the flavor text, but I, I feel like 
Bolas is a near kind of villain, you know? The foreshadowing even goes so far as to show a massive hole in the stained glass window that the camera pans through in the War of the Spark trailer. Gideon is going to prove Nicole Bolas wrong and save the day with an actual act of self-sacrifice. Gideon will die. Chandra. Chandra's fate is very much up in the air. On one hand, she's been around since Planeswalkers were first introduced to the game in card form, and she's gone through a lot of notable character development over the course of Battle for Zendikar and Kaladesh for her death to have a significant emotional impact. However, she's only just reconnected with Jaya Ballard, who she knows as Mother Lucy, and I feel like Wizards is setting up a future Chandra central story where she finally learns to optimally control her pyromancy. You could argue that Kaladesh was the storyline already, and Chandra has already had her moment in the sun and I could very easily see that. However, I have a feeling that Chandra is going to survive the battle. I also feel that much like the flavor text of Gideon's defeat foreshadows his death, I feel that the flavor text of Chandra's defeat foreshadows her utilizing something other than fire to defeat Bolas. Maybe the arc bow. Maybe she'll just pick up Tezzeret and throw him at, at, the, at the dragon and he'll get like spiked in the eye and get tetanus. You, I have no idea where that arm's been, let's be honest. Jaya, however, will probably not be so lucky. She's already refused to join the Gatewatch because she's, quote, not a joiner, and I feel her death will act as inspiration for Chandra to take more personal responsibility. I have to imagine that at least one of the three recently returned walkers will bite it in this upcoming battle, and I doubt it'll be either Khan or Teferi. Khan still has a wealth of unfinished business with New Phyrexia and whilst Teferi doesn't have much in the way of loose ends to tie up, I think that it'd be a really bogus move to have him get his Planeswalker Spark back only to be killed by the same Elder Dragon who sucked it out of him in the first place. He also ripped off Teferi's head, but you know, he, he got better. You can see why Bolas wants to go back to being the power level of an old walker. Dovin! Oh. Oh, he dead. <laughs> Dovin real goddamn dead. Dovin is either going to get killed by the Gatewatch during a skirmish, going to get killed by Bolas when he inevitably gets duped by a combo of Jace and Chandra and mucks up a key part of the plan, or he's going to get overwhelmed by Bolas' army in the moment that he realises that Bolas' schemes is for his benefit and his benefit alone. Dovin is going to die. <laughs> Domri, however, I believe is going to live. Once he realizes that Bolas's planned subjugation of the multiverse impacts the freedom of the Grull, he will realize he's been duped and throw in with the Gatewatch. At least, that's what I believe should happen if Wizards is planning on writing characters consistently. Why would this lead him to survive when most of the rest of Bolas's hench people would incur his wrath the moment they betray him? Four words. Ilharg the Razebore. It could be three. Razebore is hyphenated. I don't know if Ilharg is an actual creature or more of a metaphor. 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 Simile. Oh, Ryan metaphor. Johnston. Big Chungus. But either way, I believe that Domri and the Grawl will call upon this power to turn the tide of battle against the Draconic Autocrat and Domri will survive as a result. Elspeth's newly returned self appeared on one of the 16 Mythic Edition Planeswalker cards hinting at her future return, potentially even within War of the Spark. If she does turn up on Ravnica, I doubt she'd get killed so soon after her resurrection. I think that it would be nice though if, just as Ajani is slipping away from a fatal injury, he sees his erstwhile friend return from the dead, kneeling over him, ushering the Leonin into a long, peaceful and well-deserved sleep. Secure in the knowledge that, at least this one time, someone he loves is there as he dies as opposed to the other way around. Sweet dreams, Dick Cat. Tybalt will get RKO'd within the first two minutes of the battle, fall down a well, and it will be another seven years before we see him again. Tezzeret! I can't imagine that the disgraced Seeker from Esper will survive the battle. He's already tangled with Jace once, and that left him feeling pretty... All right, a hey, oh wait no, hang on, no wait, his it was his it was his right arm that got mangled by the mana blades. His 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 left arm is completely fine. Well, great, now I've just been ableist and not even funny. Regardless, Tezzeret has been a slave to Bolas for a good many canonical years now, and he's already had his moment in the sun on Kaladesh. I predict he'll land a wound on Jace as payback for disarming him, 
got there before seeing Bolas ebbing towards a failure and betraying the dragon at the last second. Whilst Tezzeret does technically owe Bolas his life, it was Bolas who was the one behind putting Jace and Tezzeret against one another, and therefore Bolas who was responsible for his mangling. It's also no secret that Tezzeret really does not appreciate being Bolas's servant. His betrayal will end in his death, but will provide a window of opportunity for someone like Vivian or Chandra to nuke the old boy. Ugin. There's no way, there's no goddamn way that Ugin's gonna get killed by his brother for a third time. Not happening. Absolutely not. If Wizards does, they are charlatans and vagabonds. I'm not even gonna entertain the narrative pros and cons to his death. It would it would be stupid. Stop it. Garrick. Oh lord, he coming. Garrick is 100% on this plane. Why? Because he has a quest to kill planeswalkers and Rao Zarek literally put out a beacon calling all planeswalkers to Ravnica for the showdown with Bolas. The real question is, will he be a wild card or will Bolas have orchestrated his arrival as a secret and surprise weapon in the battle? I don't know if the apex predator will die during the battle or if the curse of the veil will be lifted. All I know is that Garrick is a hungry boy and he's gonna do some chomping. Maybe Vivian will use the arc bow to kill him rather than Bolas to save another walker or something. That'd be neat. Either way, Garrick is there and he's either gonna be dead or back to normal. Jace should die. He should. Everyone's tired of him. He's gotten his arc. He's gotten his memories back. He lost them again. He got them again. His character has run its course. Jace should die at the hands of Tezzeret or Bolas himself, but he won't. You know why? Because if you run a very successful collectible card game and the font you use on those cards is named after a character, you don't kill that character off. If Wizards does kill Jace, I will be very happy and impressed. He doesn't have any loose ends, he's been printed to death. Jace should die, but whether or not he will is not a question of does it make narrative sense, more so is Wizards brave enough to take that leap. If he does die, he should do so after ruining Dovinbarn's day and a apologising to Liliana for doubting her at the end of Dominaria's storyline. Tamiyo. It was at this moment in the script that I began to realise that there are a lot more unique planeswalkers in Magic than I had anticipated, but then again, would this really be a Spice 8 Rack video if I didn't take over half an hour to say something that could have been said in a Tinder DM? We know that Tamiyo is currently on Ravnica thanks to the Azorius Spire in the Art of Her Mythic Edition card, and I think she'd be a wild, out of left field death a la Gamora from Infinity War. No, I will not stop comparing this to Infinity War, they both have war in the title, they're practically the same. She never really had a storyline or character arc herself, aside from that question that she's been looking into as to why Emrakul used her to trap herself in Innistrad's moon. Aside from that, Tamiyo is very much a closed book, ready to be picked up and ripped apart by Dominaria's most most ancient librarian. I think she's going to die, and yes, I am very sad about it. Kaya. I hope she doesn't get killed, although it would leave room for Taser to take control of the oars of... Oh god, I haven't even thought about the fate of all the legendary creatures on Ravnica. Um, okay, uh, so Taser and Lavinia survive. Uh, Lazav is presumed dead, but turns up at the end with a cheeky wink to the camera. Um, Cranko turns out to be the Raven Man and everyone else gets punched into the sun. Whew. Oh, that was quick. Okay, back to Kaya. Kaya's done a lot of good for the souls bound to the Orzov, and she only took the role of the head of the Orzov after Bolas promised to pay her struggling family. She's a very clear anti-hero, and it would be great to see her character progress with more interesting mechanics, and whilst we've already previously discussed Bolas isn't exactly the kind of person to take betrayal lightly, I think Kaya's inane abilities as a spooky ghost could see her escaping the clutches of the dragon during the battle. Kiora. Not to mince words, but Kiora absolutely buggered the dog on Zendikar. Why did I say buggered the- Oh, it's, it's, it's screwed the pooch. Why have I written buggered the dog? Jesus. She tried to kill two Eldrazi Titans with one big octopus who got sliced in half. She tried to get into a punch up with Nyssa who refused to let the Titans just do their own thing in the hopes that they'd peace off to the blind eternities. Uh, spoiler alert there, Kiora. Nyssa already tried that and that's what led to the event of Battle for Zendikar. It's almost like you shouldn't allow powerful entities free reign over the world in hope that they'll do something that benefits you. And when the titans were finally destroyed, Kiora left. D didn't even help to clean up. While she has been just awfully unhelpful in the past, I have a feeling she'll return to the story to assist the Gatewatch and to make amends for her past mistakes. As to whether or not she'll die? 
I'm honestly not too sure. I feel as if she has more of a story to tell, but with no loose plot threads dangling off of her, she's pretty prime murder real estate. Ooh, speaking of... Nyssa! Look, I'm not saying that Wizards has a habit of swapping out one monogreen planeswalker before radically changing the previous title holder's character or killing them, but... You know, Garrick exists. Nyssa broke her bond to the Gatewatch, but still has a desire to preserve a life across the multiverse, and as such, I imagine she'll rally to Rao's beacon. I also predict that she'll be a surprise death that will come out of nowhere quite early in the story as to really ramp up the perceived stakes. Nyssa takes all of the boxes of being a viable candidate for killing. No loose plot threads? Check. Thoroughly explore design space? Check. Establish and develop relationships that will lead to an emotional and impactful death? Check. Yeah. Yeah, you know, Nyssa's gone. Obnixilus! The demon did promise vengeance against Nyssa, Jace, Chandra and Gideon, but whether or not he'll enact his revenge as a secret agent of Bolas, or if he's destined to return as an antagonist in a later set, is very much up in the air. For my money, Ravnica only has room for a small handful of surprise villains, and I'd imagine Wizards wants to save Obnixilus for another storyline. That being said, with Rao's beacon going up in the air, it wouldn't be out of this world to imagine that Obnixilus is going to see that as an opportunity to confront the Gatewatch and could well turn up. I very much doubt he'll die though. Sahili! Sahili will come to Ravnica to fight Bolas alongside Huatli, who met her on Kaladesh during her first planeswalk. With no cliffhangers in Sahili's story yet to be told, I could see her in the same camp as Nyssa and Tamiyo as being surprise murder buddies, but equally I feel like there's so much more that could be done with magic soon to be only is it coloured planeswalker. I'd say that the odds on Sahili dying are incredibly low, but not non-existent. Sarkhan is dead. Sarkin is very dead. Sarkin is so dead that I can even guess exactly how he'll die and I'll get onto that in a second. But first, why is Sarkin dead? Well, simply, he's done everything that he wanted to do. He's broken free of servitude to Bolas, he saved all the dragons on his home plane, he even made a nice friend. Sarkin has gone from a dragon fanboy into a conduit for dragon kind itself. There are no more apparent stories to tell with Sarkin, and I have a feeling he was printed in M19 for the specific reason of reminding the player base that he exists before killing him off in War of the Spark. As for how he's going to die, I predict that he and Ugin are going to fight Bolas in dragon form, only for Sarkun to get beaten to the earth and killed. I don't think it's going to be a major moment in the story, one of the more sort of background deaths that's going to happen, but I guarantee that Sarkun is going to die in some way or another. And Narset will get real pissed. Nihiri! I highly doubt that after her disastrous experiences with cooperating with other walkers, that the Hiri would even bother showing up on Ravnica, lightning bug or not. I genuinely don't think she's going to be there. I think she's going to be absolutely safe. And finally, the one you've all been waiting for, will Nicole Bolas die? Absa, goddamn lootly, are you insane? Bolas has been constantly meddling in the post-mending storyline of Magic since Time Spiral, taking short naps during Lorwyn, Return to Ravnica, Innistrad and Theros. The comparison to Thanos is a fair one, but the major difference is that Thanos only actually turned up as an interactable character in Infinity War. Guardians of the Galaxy absolutely does not count and you know it, fight me. Bolas, on the other hand, has been on cards, art, directly referenced in flavor text, openly admitted his schemes in webcomics. He's been winning constantly for the last eight years or so. Him beating the Gatewatch on Amonkhet was his Infinity War moment. When the unthinkable happened, he beat the Gatewatch and Jace got amnesia because that's never happened twice before. This is where his story ends. It's been alluded to at M19 when his origins and backgrounds were laid out in case anyone missed it before it's never brought up again. And it's been alluded to in the trailer when the candle representing the gem of becoming goes out at the end. Hell, it's alluded to in the fact that his new card can be killed by Ugin now, whereas it couldn't before. Although it's important to note that God Pharaoh Bolas can also kill Ugin, and Ugin would have to kill himself to kill God Pharaoh Bolas. So who knows, maybe Ugin does get killed for a third time after all. Big whoop. Bolas will take a lot of planeswalkers with him, but I guarantee he's going down. So, just to recap, I predict that on the Gatewatch's side, Ajani, Vraska, Tamiya, Ral, Nyssa, Gideon, Jaya and Sarkhan are likely going to die with a potential smattering of some other lesser known walkers for good measure, and on Team Bolas, Tezzeret, Dovin and Bolas himself along with the gooey wildcard of Garak are going to die. 
Do you think I was right? Do you think I was wrong? Let me know in the comments below. Also, thank you so much for the massive influx of support, you guys. It is overwhelming. There were a couple of people in the Goblins video asking if I had a Patreon, so maybe that's something I'm going to set up in the future. Also, if we hit 5,000 subscribers, I'm thinking of doing some kind of Q&A type thing. So if you have any questions you'd like me to answer, please leave them in the comments or hit me up on Twitter at StandUpPoet or at Spice8Rack. I would love to hear from you guys. And as always, stay spicy.